ASMR history video here on the channel. Now, in our previous ASMR history video, I asked you guys to hit 100 likes, and as soon as we did that, I would record this follow-up video, this sequel, if you will, and, well, it was it was done within, within a day, which is crazy for me, so thank you all so much for, for doing that. And uh, as you can tell by the title, this is of course World War II, the, the follow-up war a few years later after World War I. If you haven't watched the World War I video, do go back and check it out. As you can tell, I'm not on camera uh, for this video. I just figured, you know what, I will save myself the camera space and, you know, the setting up and everything. Because the way we edit these videos, I don't spend too much time on camera anyway, so seemed a little pointless. So yeah, we're going to be breaking down the key events and the timeline of World War II. So I think that's enough introduction. Let's get into it now. Now this timeline that I've got here, obviously, is not going to be extensive and there are many moving parts in this war, but the timeline I have in front of me, I think, is just the, the really key dates and stuff, so to, to give you a, give you an outline of what went on, who was involved, and give you some details, but it won't be all of them, of course. So, we begin in 1938, German Anschluss with Austria. Hitler went ahead with his plans to unify all German-speaking people. He annexed Austria. German people in the Sudetenland region of Czechoslovakia. Neville Chamberlain flew to Germany to attempt a settlement before war broke out. On the 30th of September 1938, we have the Treaty of Munich. Hitler, Chamberlain, De Lady of France and Mussolini of Italy met in Munich and agreed that Hitler should have the Sudetenland of Czechoslovakia. The Czechs were not represented at the meeting and realising that no country would come to their aid were forced to surrender the Sudetenland to Germany. Hitler assured those at the meeting that this was the extent of his ambitions for expansion. Chamberlain returned to England with a piece of paper signed by Hitler proclaiming peace in our time. Well, spoilers, that, that turns out to not quite be true. Moving forward to March 1939, Hitler invades Czechoslovakia. Despite the assurances given by Hitler in the Treaty of Munich, he marched into Czechoslovakia and occupied the country. Throughout March and April 1939, Britain rearms and reassures Poland. system was installed along the east coast. Conscription was introduced and assurances were given to Poland, who was being threatened by the Fuhrer. In late August 1939, we have Russia and Germany signing a pact. Hitler and Stalin signed a non-aggression pact, which included secret for the division of Poland. And then moving on to the 1st of September 1939, Hitler invades Poland. Two days later, on the 3rd of September 1939, Britain and France declare war on Germany. Neville Chamberlain broadcasts this announcement that the country was at September 1913 to May 1940. This is what we call the Phony War. The months following Britain's declaration of war are referred to as the Phony War because Britain actually saw no military action. On April, May and May 1940, Hitler invades Denmark and Norway. Hitler invaded and occupied Denmark and Norway to safeguard supply routes of Swedish ore and all 
also to establish a Norwegian base from which to break the British naval blockade on Germany. On 10th of May 1914, we have Blitzkrieg. Hitler launches his Blitzkrieg, in brackets, lightning war against Holland and Belgium. Rotterdam was bombed almost to extinction. May 1914, Chamberlain resigns. Neville Chamberlain resigned after pressure from Labour members for a more po active prosecution of the war, and Winston Churchill becomes the new head of the wartime coalition government. Chamberlain gave Churchill his unreserved support. Ernest Bevan was made Minister of Labour and recruited workers for the factories and stepped up coal production. Lord Beaverbrook, Minister of Aircraft Production, increased production of fighter aircraft. On the 26th of May 1940, we have Dunkirk, brackets, Operation Dynamo. The British Commander-in-Chief, General Gort, had been forced to retreat to the coast at Dunkirk. The troops waited under merciless fire to be taken off the beaches. A call went out to all owners of seaworthy vessels to travel to Dunkirk to take the troops off the beaches of Dunkirk. More than 338,000 men were rescued, among them some 140,000 French, who would form the nucleus of the Free French Army under a little-known general, Charles de Gaulle. On the 11th of June 1940, Italy entered the war on the side of the Axis powers. Italy's motive for entering the war was the hope of rich pickings from the spoils of war. On the 22nd of June 1940, France signs an armistice with Germany. The French, Marshal Pétain, signed an armistice with Germany taking France, which had been devastated, out of the war and into German occupation. On the 10th of July to the 31st of October 1940, we have the Battle of Britain. The Battle of Britain comprised four phases. Number one, during July, Hitler sent his Luftwaffe bombers to attack British ports. His aim was also to assess the speed and quality of the response by the RAF. Number two, during August, the attacks on shipping continued, but bombing raids were concentrated on RAF airfields. Number three, we have the Blitz, very well known of course. From September 7th to the, uh, from September 7th, the city of London was heavily bombed. Hitler hoped to destroy the morale of the British people. And the fourth phase was night bombing, with the failure of Hitler began a series of nightly bombing raids on London and other important industrial cities. The RAF defended the skies and by October 31st the raids had ceased. On the 22nd of September 1940 we have the Tripartite Pact. This pact of mutual alliance was signed by Germany, Italy and Japan. December 1940, British root Italians in North Africa. Italian forces in North Africa were rooted, routed, I'm not sure, by the British led by General Wavell. In early 1941, Italy and Germany attack Yugoslavia. German and Italian troops attacked Yugoslavia, Greece and the island of Crete. German Field Marshal Erwin Rommel led the Axis powers back to North Africa. On the 22nd of June 1941, Hitler. <coughs> On the 22nd of June 1941, Hitler attacks Russia with Operation Barbarossa. Hitler sent 3 million soldiers and 3,500 tanks into Russia. The Russians were taken by surprise as they had signed a treaty with Germany in 1939. Stalin immediately signed a mutual assistance treaty with Britain and launched an Eastern Front battle that would claim 20 million casualties. The US 
USA, which had been supplying arms to Britain under a Lend-Lease Agreement, offered similar aid to the USSR. On the 7th of December 1941, we have Pearl Harbor. The Japanese, who were already waging war against the Chinese, attacked the US Pacific Fleet at Pearl Harbor in Hawaii as a preliminary to taking British, French and Dutch colonies in Southeast Asia. And consequently, on the 8th of December 1941, Britain and US declare war on Japan. Moving into 1942 in February, the Japanese take Singapore. The Japanese captured Singapore from the British, taking some 60,000 prisoners. On the June, in June 1942, we have the Battle of Midway. The USA defeated the Japanese Navy at the Battle of Midway. Following this victory, the US Navy was able to push the Japanese back. August 1942, Allies in North Africa. General Alexander was given a handwritten directive from Churchill, ordering that his main directive was to be the destruction of the German-Italian army commanded by Field Marshal Rommel, together with all its supplies and establishments in Egypt and Libya. As soon as sufficient material had been built up, Alexander handed the campaign over to General Montgomery. On the 23rd of October 1942, we have the Battle of El Alamein. Montgomery attacked the German-Italian army in North Africa with a massive bombardment, followed by an armoured attack. He then proceeded to chase the routed enemy some 1,500 miles across the desert. November 1942, we have the Battle of Stalingrad. The Russians won their first victory against Germany at the Battle of Stalingrad. Also, in November 1942, the Allies push into North Africa. British and American forces under the command of General Dwight Eisenhower landed in the northwest of Africa and assumed control of French Morocco and Algeria. They gradually closed in on the Germans. On May 12, 1943, Axis surrendered managed to defeat the Axis forces in North Africa. In July 1943, the Allies, British and US forces invade Sicily. And in August that same year, the Allied troops won the island of Sicily. On the 3rd of September 1943, Italy surrenders. Mussolini had been thrown out of office, and the new government of Italy surrendered to the British and the USA. They then agreed to join the Allies. The Germans took control of the Italian army, freed Mussolini from imprisonment, and set him up as head of a puppet government in northern Italy. This blocked any further Allied advance through Italy. November 19. Allies meet at Tehran. Stalin, Roosevelt and Churchill met to coordinate plans for a simultaneous squeeze on Germany. They also discussed post-war settlements. Churchill mistrusted Stalin, Roosevelt anxious to show that the West would not stand against Russia went along with Stalin's wishes for a second front in France and no diversions further east. Churchill was overruled and the fate of post-war Eastern Europe was thus decided. Moving into 1944, in January Leningrad is relieved. The siege of Leningrad was lifted by the Soviet army. In June 1944, Rome is liberated. Italy had surrendered in September. It was only now that the Allies were able to liberate Rome from the Germans. On the 
6th of June 1944, we have D-Day, obviously another very famous day. The Allies launched an attack on Germany's forces in Normandy, western France. Thousands of transports carried an invasion army under the supreme command of General Eisenhower to the Normandy beaches. The Germans, who had been fed false information about a landing near Calais, rushed troops to the area but were unable to prevent the Allies from forming a solid bridgehead. For the Allies, it was essential to first capture a port. In July 1944, the Japanese are evicted from Burma. British forces under General Slim, with help from guerrilla fighting Shindits led by Ord Wingate, evicted the Japanese from Burma. On the 25th of August 1944, Paris is liberated. The French capital of Paris was liberated from the Germans. On the 8th of September 1944, we have the first V2 flying bombs killing three people in London. December 1944, we have Battle of the Bulge. Interesting name for a battle. Germany launches its final defensive through the Ardennes region of Belgium. However, they were beaten back by the Allies, so the German Bulge was beaten. You'll have to see it. Moving into March 1945, the Allies cross the Rhine. The Allies crossed the Rhine while Soviet forces were approaching Berlin from the east. On April 1945, President Roosevelt dies and he is succeeded by President Truman. April 1945 as well, the Russians breach Berlin. The Russians reached Berlin shortly before the US forces. On the 28th of April 1945, Mussolini is captured and executed. Italian partisans capture Mussolini and execute him. And on the 30th of April 1945, two days after the execution of Mussolini, Adolf Hitler commits suicide. German leader Adolf Hitler commits suicide in his bomb-proof shelter together with his mistress Eva Braun, who he had at the last minute made his wife. Well, nice. On the 2nd of May 1945, German forces surrender. German forces in Italy surrender to the Allies. And two days later, on the 4th of May 1945, Further German forces surrender. German forces in northwest Germany, Holland, and Denmark surrendered to Montgomery on Lundberg Heath. Admiral Donitz, whom Hitler had nominated as his successor, tried to reach an agreement to surrender to the Western Allies but to continue to fight the Russians. His request was, funnily enough, refused. On the 7th of May 1945, Donitz offers unconditional surrender. Hitler's successor offers an unconditional surrender to the Allied forces. And on the 8th of May 1945, we have VE Day. Victory in Europe is celebrated. Now, despite that being the sort of, you know, victory in Europe, there were still wars being fought sort of elsewhere, particularly with Japan, but before that, on the 5th of July 1945, Churchill loses the election. Winston Churchill lost the election to Clement Attlee's Labour Party. The Labour Party promised sweeping social reforms, including nationalisation of the coal and railway industries, and the creation of a welfare state. The Labour Party gained 393 seats to the Conservatives, 213. It was generally accepted that the landslide victory for Labour was due to the men and women of the armed services who did not want to resume civilian life under the conditions that they had before they entered the service. On the 6th of August 1945, the Japanese generals refused to surrender and a 
As a result, the US dropped an atomic bomb on the city of Hiroshima. And two days later, on the 8th of August, Russia declares war on Japan. Russia declares war on Japan and invades Japanese-ruled Manchuria. The next day, on the 9th of August, another atomic bomb is dropped, but this time on the city of Nagasaki, as the Japanese had not surrendered following the events of Hiroshima. But finally, five days later, on the 14th of August, the Japanese unconditionally surrendered to the Allies, and this surrender was, I don't know why it took them so long to accept, but US General Douglas MacArthur accepts Japan's surrender, thus formally ending the Second World War, and that was on the 2nd of September, 1945. So yeah, that does conclude the timeline of events of World War II. I mean, although we gave a few more details, like I said, there are so many more details and intricacies that we could have gone into, like this video could have easily been due to three hours long. I mean, it, 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 there's a reason it's like old modules at schools and stuff, because there is just so much to it. I think in the future I will uh, maybe like break it down a bit, so maybe do a video like looking at, you know, the Nazis and stuff, but obviously I'd have to do it in quite a sensitive way, because, you know, I'm Nazi ASMR isn't exactly like a, a very nice title, is it? But, anyways guys, that is going to wrap it up for this video, hopefully you did enjoy, hopefully you did find it relaxing, but also maybe you learned something, or maybe it was decent for a vision. <laughs>